Hey everybody, it's CMonkey420 back again uh, with more MSI goodness uh, in my geek cast here. Just going to give you a full kind of overview, run through on how to install XP, OS X, and Ubuntu on the MSI Wind. Um, previously I've shown how to upgrade the hard drive and memory fairly easily. The only downfall of that upgrade of course was the voiding of one's warranty. So, if you're okay with you know voiding a warranty, go right for it. Along with uh, stuff we're doing right now this will void your warranty probably too and again this is for educational purposes only aka disclaimer so here we go first thing we'll do is we're going to install windows xp um, i've created an enlightened version of windows xp specifically for the msi wind basically what i've done is i've uh added the wind drivers to the installation so it should automatically have all my basic drivers set up uh, my Wi-Fi probably will not work since I am using the replaced the version, the Dell True Mobile Broadcom 1491. So that works in OS X. So let's go to it here. Uh, basically what I'm going to do, we're going to be doing our disk formatting and partitioning in Windows XP initially here. So we're just going to pretend like this is a brand new hard drive, which basically it is because I threw it in from my... Um, from my PS3's old hard drive, just formatted. Um, basically, also we're using a Targus uh, removable DVD-ROM drive as uh, my for the media and installation. Um, you can make an SD card or USB drive bootable and do the install, but it takes some time to do. So I figure I might as well just use a CD or DVD that I came with. It's a lot easier. It cost me like 30 bucks on eBay too, in case you're wondering. Plus, how many people actually write to a CD when they have a device like this? Not many people. Um, the installation here will be a little different than what most people are used to. It's actually an uh, automated process here. So I'll put in my, my uh, CD key, basic information like that. Uh, however, the one thing we're going to look at here will be the partitioning scheme. What I do is I create my primary partition, well actually I delete all my partitions with the XP disk, then create one single primary partition which I will s install XP to. Once XP is loaded, I'll boot up into XP, create a new partition, primary partition that will be used for OS X, uh, basically log off, boot into OS X, install, do the installation to that new partition I created, format it also in the Mac OS journal, I think it is HFS journaled file system. And then I'll fix the MBR on that partition, and then we'll install Ubuntu to a final and third primary partition on the same hard drive. Um, I'm not going to have the full length of the install. We're going to speed through some of the boring parts, like this part. So you'll notice that I'll make notes when we're, when we're time lapsing or when it's not real time. So, so it could get pretty boring fast. Okay, so this is kind of our screens here. You'll see that we have two partitions right now. I have a USB and a data. I was using this in an external hard drive. So basically what I'm going to do on this screen is I'm going to delete both partitions by using the D letter. It's going to ask me if I want to delete the partition. I'll do an L to confirm. Um, then do the same thing with this other partition too. Do an L to confirm. Um, now we're going to create one. Since I have a 60 gig drive I'm only using right now, I'm going to only allocate, let's say 20 gigs per OS to all the OSs. So I'm just going to do 20,000 for the bytes or 4 megabytes here just to make sure I don't use it all there we go it's gonna now once we create that partition it'll show it here we're gonna install to it we're gonna format it with NTFS quick since uh, XP likes it a little better we could do FAT32 and make it more readable in uh, OS X however OS X will read NTFS at least the Hackintosh version has a driver built in so shouldn't have a problem with that and this will just be your normal Windows XP install. I'll let this go. So there's XP up and running now. What we're going to do now is uh, we're going to set up the partition for OS X, which will be the next installation we'll be doing. Uh, the version I'm installing of OS X is an older one, 10.5.2. Um, you can patch, though, the OS X this installation up to the 5.4, I think. 10.5.4, I believe, is the latest that's patched. At least uh, for us Hackintosh users. So. What we'll do here is um, we want to right click on my computer, go to manage. We're then going to want to go to disk management. When we go there, we're going to see right now, what we have right now here. 
our C drive which we have XP installed and then we have 36 gigabytes of unallocated space. We're going to right click on there, do a new uh, partition. This will be the partition we're going to create is going to be a primary. Next. Uh, I'm going to give OS X 15 gigs because this is just a, a dummy drive of mine, a backup in case mine ever dies. I think you need at least 8 gigs to install a Leopard. Um, Next thing you ask for is drive letter or path to assign one. We're not going to, since we're not using it in XP. It won't even be readable. We're not going to format it either. If you want, you can format it as FAT. fat. Uh, however, NTFS will not show up in OSX, the installation DVD. And then I'll do finish. And it'll take about, you know, five seconds. And there we are. We have a 14 gigabyte healthy partition here. So, now, what we'll do is we'll pop in our patch version of OS X, whichever you choose to be your build. For this example, we will be using uh, the Callaway build. And we'll just uh, shut down and restart and boot to that. I do like the fact that the wind does have a ton of boot up options but you can boot from basically anything that plugs into it. Let me use F8. I like to go to verbose mode with the that, uh, minus V command. So this will just let us kind of see if there's errors or any um, kernel overloads or whatever you want to call them. This will take a few minutes to load up of course. So you'll see here we have the OSX uh, Leopard Callaway Star launcher right now. Took about five, I think about seven minutes to finally load up the GUI. I didn't record all because it's obviously too boring to watch. Basically, the, what we're going to do first, the first thing we'll do is we're going to format that partition we created in XP for uh, Leopard install on. So we're going to make it the Mac OS. Um, HFS journaled file system. We're going to wait for it right away. You'll notice it'll take a second or two for it to load. To uh, format, we'll go to Utilities, Disk Utility. Probably will take a second to load. I'm not sure how fast the CD drive I have is, so it might be a really slow reading. Or this could be normal, I'm not sure. One or the other, but. On the left side, we'll see disk 0s1. That's your primary partition. That's probably the one you installed uh, Windows XP on. Um, the one we're curious about is the disk 0s2, which is the second partition, the empty non mounted uh, one. What we're going to do is we're going to choose it, go to Erase. We're going to change the volume format to the top one, the Mac OS Extended Journaled. We're going to name it appropriately, OS X, just to make things easy. Um, if you want, you can do the Secure Erase Free Space options, Security options, to make it so it writes uh, zero byte files to it, so it clearly wipes it. Or if you're like me and lazy, you just do Erase the non-secure way. And this will take about maybe a minute or two, not too long. And notice now on the left side it's actually not grayed out since it's mounted. And it is now going to be installable. So now we'll go to Disk Utility, Quit Disk Utility. Brings us back to our installer. We're going to keep going on.